Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. It is gorgeous uh, today here in California and we're mid 60s in January so it is a beautiful day uh, to be outside. Um, let's get to it. Uh, what am I going to make for you guys tonight? Well, what am I going to make for us too? Uh, we're going to do some grilled tri-tip, which I love to cook. Tri-tip is so much fun to cook because it tastes so good. Um, and it's, it's, it's like a real technical thing. If you get into it with the barbecue, you're checking that. You want to get that sear on there. You want to indirect cook that guy. And uh, we have a, this probe, it's called a meter. And what that does is it uh, keeps perfect track of that temperature, which is super important when you're doing a tri-tip. So I'll, I'll explain more of that later. Um, it's gonna be really good, but that's not all. There's more. We are also going to be cooking up some twice baked mashed or twice baked potatoes. There's mashed potatoes inside, but you know. So that's gonna be really good too. And um, I think you guys are really gonna enjoy these recipes. Um, that being said, I want you to stay tuned because I've got more good stuff coming up this weekend. We're gonna be heading out to the uh, coast, uh, specifically Dillon's Beach, which is um, a little bit uh, north of San Francisco, beautiful camping area. And I am gonna bring you guys some Dutch oven cooking which I think you're really gonna enjoy. Hopefully get at least two recipes down in there and get some good uh, beach footage. And this little girl is really happy because the ocean is her favorite place. She's gonna be all over the place. Um, it'll be, it'll be, uh, I'll be lucky if I can get her to sit still like this for a video, but we'll see. Um, like I said, thanks for joining me again. Uh, thanks for checking out the channel. Um, if you're new here, uh, hit that uh, thumbs up button, subscribe, like, get those notifications. I'm very much appreciated. And when I bring you guys back, I'll show you what we're working with. All right. Okay, and we are back. Star of today's show, you see right down there, that is a gorgeous three pound tri-tip. Has a burgundy pepper marinade. Now you can put whatever marinade you want on there, but tri-tip does really good with a nice marinade. It's a little hint there. Whatever marinade you do decide to use, you wanna put that on about 24 hours in advance. Let that meat just marinate in there. It'll all soak up. It should be really tasty. Um, another thing to note about the tri-tip, you want to bring out the tri-tip about two or three hours or maybe two hours before you cook it. Let it rise up to room temperature. It's going to uh, cook a lot better that way. And back there, you'll notice the meter, mentioned that a little bit earlier. That's going to be the uh, thermometer, which is going to send the exact temperature back to my phone periodically. And what that's going to do is allow us to achieve that perfect temperature of that tri-tip. Moving over here, we've got the co-star of today's show. We've got beautiful rusted potatoes. What we're gonna do with those is we're going to cover them uh, with a little bit of olive oil, olive oil, pepper and salt. Got the oven preheating over here to 375. We're gonna roast those until they are nice and soft. Not completely soft, but um, when, you, when you grab a hold of them, they should give a little bit. That's gonna let you know that they're almost done. Below that, we're gonna have the ingredients for the twice baked potatoes. We've got a little butter. It's gonna make a mash in there. We've got some sour cream. Ooh, whoa, what we got down there? That's bacon. That always makes everything better. We've got some green onions down there. We're gonna chop that up in there. I'm gonna show all of that to you guys later. But as I mentioned, we've got a beautiful setup in front of us. It should make for a wonderful meal. And I'll bring you guys back when I get that tri-tip going. Okay, and we are back. As you can see, we are getting ready to throw this tri-tip on the grill. To that far right there, you can see I've inserted the meter. And a little bit about the meter. Um, meter is like a really cool, it's the best thermometer that I've found that's remote in that sense in that it keeps track of the ambient temperature, so the temperature of the grill, and also the internal, internal temperature of this tri-tip. So that's super important because I want this tri-tip, I'm gonna take it off at about 125 and then let it rest for about a good 15, 20 minutes. And what that's gonna do is that's gonna bring it up to about 130, a nice medium rare, which is the way I like it. One thing I wanted to note, you can notice I put the meter in the kind of the thick part of the meat, reason being, some people like their uh, tri-tip more well done. So you can come towards the lower parts here, which are thinner. Those are gonna be uh, more uh, well done versus the inside is gonna be more medium rare, the way I like it. So everybody's happy that way. Okay, so let's see if we can grab this guy and I'll show you what I'm gonna do next here. Okay. Holes like that. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna sear him on each side for about two minutes. What I'm gonna do though is I'm gonna put him on that, let him sear, then I'm gonna shift him around so I get those nice grill marks on there. Flip it around another two minutes, do the same thing. 
uh, shift him around, get some nice grill marks on there. And then I'm gonna move him over here to the indirect side, cover for about 15 minutes, come back, flip him again, all the while keeping track of that uh, uh, monitor, the temperature monitor. And I think what we're gonna end up with this is a really, really good tri-tip. So I will bring you guys back at about the 15 minute mark and show you where we're at. All right, and we are back. So we've been about 15 minutes on this one side. You can see we've got some really nice grill marks on there. So we're about ready to flip this over. Uh, we're about uh, 10 minutes or so out, according to the meter, uh, for done until we rest. But like I said, right now we will flip it. And while I'm doing that, uh, okay. We have a special guest out here who's helping light up my tri-tip, my beautiful daughter. Can you say hi, daughter? Hi. All right, so we appreciate that. Um, we're gonna let this finish cooking and I will bring you guys back after it's rested and we'll take a look. In the meantime, our next video will be those twice baked potatoes and how we prep those. See you in a bit. Okay, and we are back. So, as you can see over here, we've cored our potatoes. Um, what I like to do is when I roast those, um, the top part of them has some olive oil, pepper and salt. That's the part showing up. I like to keep that uh, part of the potato. Like I said, I, I, I don't know if I mentioned it earlier, but what I like to do is for each potato, I only keep half of the shell. Because what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna fill it with the entire potato. I think that works a lot better. But I keep the part that has the salt and pepper on there. So we're gonna move to what we've done here. So we've taken the potato uh, insides out and we'll kind of just, mash those up here all right before we get our mix master involved got to keep everything in there okay that looks pretty good first ingredient we have here is we'll put our butter in there we'll let that start to melt which is critical to any really good mashed potatoes background noise there. Uh, we'll get our pepper and salt in there. A little pepper and salt. We have our sour cream. Put that in there. Okay. We have our bacon. What we did with this bacon is we cooked that low and slow came out really nice and crispy, uh, which is a great contrast to the soft potato. It, it's it's uh, it's really important to get that bacon nice and crispy, really adds to it. So we'll put that in there. We've got our green onions diced up. Put, ooh, oh, those look good. Put that in there. Okay. Now, of course, we're gonna put cheese on the top, but we're also gonna put some cheese inside there, which is good. So we'll get that in there too, just a little bit. Oh, there we go. All right. Now, we have a little bit of milk. I like to start easy on the milk and then work our way up. We don't want to add too much and then it's, you can't really take it out. So we'll just put a little bit in there for right now and see if we need more later. Let's kind of integrate everything together here. And I'm pretty sure we're going to need a little bit more pepper in there. That's a good starting point. Okay, a little bit more pepper. I like a lot of pepper and you know, you should season to your own taste and preference. So if you prefer a little less then you put a little less in there. All right, that's a good point. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna blend this together. Start low. Looking at integrating all those ingredients together. We don't want uh, lumpy potatoes. So do that. Okay. Work all the ingredients together. Take your time with it. A little bit of mess, but it's all part of the experience. But ultimately what we're gonna do is we're gonna blend this all together and then we're gonna put that back into the potato 
put some cheese in there and let that continue to bake. And what that's going to turn into is just really yummy, twice baked potato. So let me finish blending this and then I'll bring you guys back to see what that final ingredient looks like. All right. So that is what we ended up with. Uh, these are loaded, twice baked potatoes. Um, They're going to be so yummy. So what we're going to do now, 350 in the oven covered for about uh, 10 minutes. Take that cover off, turn on that broiler for maybe two or three minutes, closely watching. We just want to get a little color on the top. When we bring that back, we're going to pair these uh, twice baked potatoes with that beautiful tri-tip and it's going to make for a wonderful meal. We'll see you back. And we are back. Okay. Uh, tri-tip's been resting for about 10, 15 minutes. Can't overemphasize the importance of that resting period. What that's going to do is if you cut into this right after you took it off the grill, all the juices will just run out. What happens if you let it rest a little bit, all those juices reintegrate into the meat and it makes it much more moist, much better cut, very tasty, very much worth the wait. So be patient. Um, before I cut this, one thing I want to note, you can notice the grains running this way. You want to cut against the grain with tri-tip and what that's going to do is that optimizes how the um, uh, the marbling in the meat and everything else gives you a much better uh, bite. It's very, much makes it more tender. So take a look at that grain. It applies to almost all steak or whatever. You'll want to look at that grain and always cut against it. So here we go. And that's what we will do here. So start cutting against that. Like I said, the ends are gonna be more well done for folks that like that. And then as we work our way to the middle, we're gonna end up with that view. Oh, geez, look at that. Beautiful. Moist, perfectly medium rare. And that's why that meter is so nice to have because it gives you that perfect temperature. And I, I don't I hope you guys can see that because that is just perfectly, oh, just beautiful. The marbling and the meat and the medium rare. It's beautiful. So I'm going to finish cutting this up and then I'll bring you guys back for that big bite. All right, guys, here we are back. And this is what we ended up with. Oh my God. We got some beautiful medium rare cooked tri-tip, a loaded uh, baked potato. We got a little salad here to keep us healthy. And uh, we're gonna dive in. Hey, nothing's left but for that big bite. Let's go for it. All right, let's see. Let's go for that tri-tipper. <laughs> All right, so that is wonderful. Perfectly cooked. Medium rare. I uh, love the uh, flavor from that um, uh, the marinade. It's just mm, that's good. But let's let's dive into these potatoes and see what we got going on here too. So potatoes. It's fantastic. At my core, I am a meat and potatoes man. So this is my ideal meal. It's just wonderful. We got the tri-tip potatoes loaded with this. Now you wouldn't want to eat this all the time, but every once in a while for a, uh, to celebrate, it's a wonderful meal. So hope you guys enjoy it. Try out the recipe. Don't forget, like I've said before, hit that thumbs up button. Uh, subscribe if you already have not and get those alerts. Hit that little bell button too. So like I said, I'm looking forward to seeing you guys later this week when we're here at Camping at the Ocean. We're going to get some really fun um, cast iron uh, Dutch oven recipes going. It's going to be a lot of a lot of fun to share that with you. So until then, we'll see you next time.